Well, I was hoping to come across as sounding polished, but maybe not. Um, FIFA is the international governing body for soccer, or depending on the, wor in the world you're from, is, is football. And since 1930, when the first World Cup was played, it's, it's been a big event globally. The first, in 2018, it was estimated that 3.6 billion people viewed the World Cup. That's half the world's population. World Cup 2026 is, brings a world of firsts. It's where three nations are now hosting, instead of one nation, the World Cup. And the global impact is to show global unity through competition in sport. So Canada, the United States, and Mexico will be the hosts for the World Cup in 2026. It's a big land setting. It crosses three countries, four time zones, multiple climatic growing climates, which requires different grasses to be grown. And it's going to grow from eight stadiums hosting a World Cup event to 16 stadiums and 150 training grounds in 48 nations. So this brings a lot of challenges, including not only stadiums in Mexico City at 9,000 feet to Edmonton in Canada at 54 degrees north latitude, but to a tropical, subtropical climate in Miami to indoors at four different stadiums. So the challenge of keeping grasses alive is big. In 2019, Mr. Alan Ferguson with FIFA approached me and said, John, I want you to lead the research project for World Cup 2026. I didn't have a gray hair on my head by then, but now I do. So the first thing I wanted to do was create a team, because soccer is a team sport, and partnering and collaborating with Michigan State University. Why Michigan State University? Because in 1994, when the World Cup was here, Michigan State University was charged with putting grass in the Pontiac Silverdome, led by Trey Rogers, under the Green Arrow. You can see me with a mullet uh, just next to him. <laughs> I was an undergraduate student working with Dr. John Steyer, now our associate dean in the Herbert College of Ag. So this is a way to bring the band back together. I've been at UT for the past 20 years doing sports turf research and as an advisor for FIFA, the NFL Players Association. Dr. Steyer, while being in administration, continues to work at our UT Center for Athletic Field Safety. And Dr. Rogers continues to do sports turf research and work with architects worldwide. There are 23 stadiums bidding to host for 16 spots in 22, over 22 cities, over three countries. So the need for research is paramount when you look at the, the vastness of the environmental climates, the, the diversity of, of the expectations to grow grass. We have warm season grasses, we have cool season grasses. But we need these things and we look at a goal of uniformity and consistency. How do we get a grass in a dome stadium to play like a grass outside in a tropical climate to a grass in a cold season climate? All play the same for playability, pitch performance, and presentation because aesthetics is a big component. For instance, Cincinnati, one of the bidding cities, has an MLS stadium. The pitch meets the requirements, but the stadium doesn't have the capacity for World Cup hosting World Cup events. So, Instead of spending hundreds of millions of dollars to expand the stadium, they look at Paul Brown Stadium, where the NFL team plays, which is what most of the U.S. cities are bidding, have U.S. stadiums, but it's artificial turf. They will not play on artificial turf. So the challenge that we've been given is to how do we put grass in a stadium, not adjust the sight lines for spectator comfort, whether it's an outdoor stadium like Paul Brown Stadium or an indoor stadium in Los Angeles, Dallas, or Houston, whoever wins these bids. There's lots of solutions for dealing with this. And in the past, they do play, put, art, put natural grass over artificial turf to play international soccer friendlies, but they don't meet FIFA standards. And the charge is, how do we get fields to play indoors, outdoors, for 12 weeks, whether it's indoors in Atlanta, for 12 weeks to be the same as week one versus week 12, to be the same as an outdoor stadium? So it all comes down to research, preparation, and planning, including another 150 training grounds. So they all have to be the same over these different, different environments. So the technologies we are implementing are to look at the best grass species and varieties, the latest varieties, and looking at actually hybrid systems of looking at reinforced fibers of biodegradable fibers that can enforce a sand-based root zone on a shallow profile Maybe having a shock pad underneath to stop, to deal with shock attenuation of athletes running and ball bounce. So our objectives are to identify, identify, and evaluate. We want to identify the proper species, the proper system to build for a 
for a sports field? And how do we evaluate these things and how do they get these to perform in a homogenous style over such a large landmass and, and di diverse area? To do this, we are actually building two 4,000 square foot controlled environment structures, one at UT and one at Michigan State University. And we're gonna look at and test the latest technologies in the LED lights. Can we look at a reduced energy and a lower photo period to grow the quality grasses that we need? And what's the best species in grass to meet FIFA standards? We also will evaluate athlete to surface interactions and how athletes perform when they run on their different surfaces to keep them safe with technologies we've developed at UT. We also look at how the ball performs at different mowing heights for ball bounce, ball reactions. And so all these stadiums, we can do high speed video analysis to make sure they all perform and play the same. 2026 is gonna be here really fast. And we've gotta do this and COVID has set us back two years, sadly. So we collaboratively are duplicating everything at UT and Michigan State University so we can have an evolution of research to meet the goals by mid 2024 and so the stadiums can now start to make their changes for 2025 implementation for 2026. So it starts with the research, goes through design, goes into the construction, operations, and it provides a training opportunity for undergraduates, graduate students, and faculty at University of Tennessee and Michigan State to work with all these stadiums and field managers. We've got our team already started, but in 1994, Michigan State Communications said that the World Cup in the Silverdome Project brought more recognition to everything in the history of the University of Michigan, or Michigan State University combined, including Magic Johnson. Without a doubt, 2026 is going to put UT at the front of the world. Thank you. <clears throat>